the Zika epidemics was such a huge, unexpected, unknown, dramatic phenomena that really, really needed uh, a multitude, uh, a, a diverse uh, collective of professionals and experts and all the population that was involved to think about it and to bring in uh, different perspectives. This usual and more conventional way of thinking in epidemics from a biomedical model has its timing and its, and its rhythm that is very fast. And anthropology has to develop its way of working in a more rapid mo mode but um, usually we have another time into it because we need to be with people, listen to them, establish trust relations, um, understand their intimate relations and their everyday life. So we have a very important um, role in the aftermath. I would like to just highlight some, some things that I find very interesting and that still need lots of thinking from our part. And one of them is the profound transformation of the household, the kinship relations, the, the marriage ties, the neighborhood ties, uh, all that transformation that ha happened within a house or within a family that received a baby with uh, the congenital syndrome of the, the Zika virus. So the profound transformation is that a, uh, an intense uh, concentration of disabilities promotes and that's something that we have been seeing all the levels of adaptation and the challenges that these that this epidemics brought the other point is the empowerment of women uh, that before this even though there were mothers of many kids and they were in the church they were in the school they were in their neighborhood communities and they did not have this uh, participation so intense uh, in NGOs or uh, becoming leaders to speak to the media, to speak to government uh, bureaucrats, to speak to doctors. So this huge and quick empowerment that women went through to defend their kids, to make their kids visible and audible, and to fight for rights for these kids. So I think this is something completely new for these women. And even though the disability movements have the same protagonism, let's say, or female empowerment has also has a wide tradition in Brazil with the fem feminist movement and the social mov movements of women. Uh, here we have together gender and disability and also women from the working class trying to put together this kind of uh, political mobilization. That is very, very interesting to observe. And the third point I would like to, to point out to here is um, how these women and how uh, many other sectors, I mean NGOs and street level bureaucrats from the health, um, uh, health services, from therapy services, from educational services, from transportation services, all these new actors are on the ground now discussing um, agendas that have been very exclusive to scientists, to researchers, to uh, transnational uh, leaders, uh, governments also, for example. Uh, and we have all these new actors sitting at the table and discussing about science, about policy making, about representation, how do you put yourself uh, in the world, how do you talk to the media. Uh, how do you design a better uh, transportation system for the kids to get to the services? So I think the epidemics has a wide range of, of aspects that we continue studying, but I would just like to stress these three points as a, also an agenda for the anthropology folks to continue researching.